What's going on everybody, this is Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be continuing solvers. I show you how to do some of those in the previous HoloLens 2 video. In this video, I'm going to show you additional ones that I think you're gonna like a lot. One of them is gonna be the hand constraint. We can basically have our hand pointing at our face. And as soon as we do that, we're gonna see a menu. I'm gonna use my left hand to basically interact with that menu. I also want to show you another constraint and actually solver that is called the surface magnetism. And that means that we're going to be able to place objects and they're going to be attaching to different surfaces. In our case, it's gonna be a special mesh that is gonna get generated based on what I'm looking around my area. The other one that I think is going to be helpful as well is gonna be the tap to place. And that one we're going to be able to tap on an object and basically place it on a surface. Again, it's going to be an special mesh. Also, I wanted to tell you, like, make sure you watch the entire video because not only this applies to HoloLens developers, but also anything that is supported with MRTK. So devices such as the Oculus Quest 2, the Oculus Quest 1, the HP Reverb G2, it's also going to be supported. And also any of the devices, the mobile devices such as AR core devices and iOS devices. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right guys, welcome again. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the demo scene that I have in here. So the first thing that I wanna show you is I'm gonna change the spatial on the mixed reality profile because I wanna show you the mesh running in runtime. The reason for that is because we have a tap to place, tap to place with follow, and also surface magnetism that is going to require a mesh. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to the existing components that are added. I'm gonna go down to the XR SDK Special Mesh Observer and I'm gonna use just the special object mesh observer, which is the one that is going to work in the Unity editor. So as soon as I do that, we can go ahead and hit play, and you're gonna see that we're going to be able to see a mesh. So now we can, you know, can look around, and this is gonna be, it's an area that Microsoft scan. And the cool thing with this is we can, you know, try some of these different implementations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the space bar, and as soon as I do that, you're gonna see that I have my hand. I can also do shift to use to do and show the left hand. So let's go ahead and just, I wanna see that menu so that we can have the menu. So the first thing, I mean, similar to what we did before, I have this menu here showing some of the solvers that we're going to be talking about. And if I do a space and I hold my, I think it's the control, yep. As soon as you do that, you're gonna be able to pivot on the, on the hand and then the, basically the menu that you see there is only going to show if the palm is basically facing the face, which in my case, in this case is the camera. So as soon as you rotate it, it's gonna go away. As soon as I get closer, you know, to the palm facing the camera, you're gonna see the menu that we're going to be, that we're going to be using. So if I were to do that on the left hand, it's actually not gonna work because I didn't set it up to work with the left hand. So I only did it on the, basically on the right hand. So, so that's the first thing that we're gonna be looking at. I don't wanna walk you through every single step because on the previous video, I have some feedback from you guys that you guys wanted to see the finished product. So I'm just gonna show you how I set it up. The other thing that I'm gonna also walk you through is going to be the surface magnetism. The way that this works is you add the surface magnetism component and it basically it's going to, it's a component that is inherent from the solvers. It also has a solver handler. You can also specify the closest distance from the, basically the surface normal. So this is gonna be, okay, when I click in here, when I'm doing the magnetism, where, I'm, where in the mesh am I, am I going to be placing my cell phone? In this case, I'm using the surface normal, so it's gonna be the normals on the, basically on the mesh. So if I wanted to basically go away from the, from the normal, you can also use the offset. So let's say I wanted to do 0.5, and you're gonna see that now there's going to be, it's more space between the normal. I, I think a number that worked, you know, worked good for me was 0.1. You can also do, you know, if you wanted to be closer to a normal, you can do that. And I can rotate, you know, I can rotate. And this is helpful, like if you wanted to place a frame and, you know, different objects that you can place on, on the mesh. There's also, obviously, if you want to increase the move lerp, the rotations, if you wanted to do, you know, a slower movement, and you can see how that it's now a lot slower because the lerp value is a lot higher. The same thing with the rotation, if you wanted to rotate that, and let's go ahead and just make this one a little smaller. You can see that the object is going to rotate, but it's going to rotate at a slower rate because the number, you know, the number is a lot higher. And you can use, you know, some of these other properties if you want to do, you know, blend it. They have different objects, different types of orientation. So I would say play, play around with those. 
closest distance, max raycast distance, those are also some properties that are available. You can also change the object type. In this case, I am using the control ray on both hands. If I were to use my left hand, you're gonna see how that also snaps. And it's basically using the pivot point of the raycast, the end of the raycast, and that's why it's using as a reference. So the other one that I wanna show you as well, let me go ahead and rotate myself here. And we're gonna be hiding this and then showing the top to place. So this one is really cool because, okay, you, I show you the, surf, the surface magnetism, but that one doesn't allow you to really, you know, place it on, on the surface. It is placed as long as you, your raycast is pointing to that, but with this tap to place, so if we look at the component, you can also tap on the object and it's going to place it at the tap position. And if you tap it again, it basically follow the raycast. If you, you know, if you tap it one more time, it'll, it'll put it in place. If I were to just double, you know, double tap it, you're gonna see that now. So what if I wanted to place it there? So you can place it there, but just, I think it's a one click and then just hold it for a few seconds. And then you can see that I can move around and then it doesn't follow the ray, but if I wanted to do that again, you can just tap it again, hold it a little bit, and then it's going to allow you to place it. The cool thing is I can, you know, if I wanted to place it far away, maybe we just put it right over there and see how I place that one. And then, you know, that's super cool functionality. Let's try the tap to follow. So this one is similar. The difference between this one is now I, I have two different objects. So I have a white, basically a white sphere and a blue sphere. The white sphere you can see because it's blended with that, but the follow object, which is the one that I covered in the previous video, it has an override and that override is, is to follow the, the blue sphere. And then the blue sphere, it's going to be the one that has the tap to play. So if I were to, let me go ahead and go back a little bit here, tap it, you're gonna see that now we have, basically we have two solvers. So one that is the tap to place and the other one is just following the, is following the blue sphere. So if I were to tap it, you can see that now it just gives you a cool look because the other one is following and it's kind of blending in place. And we can just go ahead and rotate, maybe put it on the ceiling right over there and you can see how that now works. We can also get closer, you know, if you wanted to move the camera around with your, you know, with your arrow keys and then we can just select it. And then, you know, you can just place it in different locations. The, the other one that I wanted to show you, I think I cover, covered it a little bit on the previous video, was the hand constraint. And this is the one that I show you, you know, if I were to hit play and show you the hand and as soon as I rotate the palm and the palm is facing myself, that's where that menu shows, right? So the way that it works is you add this hand constraint palm up object. And when you add that object, it, you know, it's gonna be very similar to the hand constraint. This is just has additional functionality, which you'll see on the very bottom in here. You can change, you know, you can change the facing camera tracking threshold. This is how many degrees until it basically shows you. So if I were to go maybe 20 and I were to rotate it, you're gonna see that it doesn't show yet. Not until, there we go. Cause that is 20 degrees on, you know, the angle uh, as it relates to the camera. So you can, you know, play with that number. This one is really cool too. Like if you wanna require a flat hand, you can also do that. And you can also add a threshold and it's going to, you know, it's going to help you in tweaking how you want that experience. You can also use gaze activation. I think that one is if you, you need to be basically looking within a specific proximity or threshold, what they call, uh, to be able to, to show the menu. If you're not looking at it at a specific, you know, within a specific boundary, then it's not gonna show you the menu. You can also use head gaze, basically different settings that allow you to, to activate the, the menu. Uh, well, in my case, the menu, because that's what I have under this object. And the other thing that I did as well is I added on hand activate. So this is, these are two different event handlers that are available and I'm just activating the hand menu component when, when the hand is visible and then when it's not visible, I'm just deactivating. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any other questions, please let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe. Also give me a like because it's gonna help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Thank you guys.